Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners to the another session of International Business Management. I, Dr. Manisha Goswami, Assistant Professor at Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Matra. Today we will talk about the Regional Economic Cooperation in lecture number 8. Before we start with the lecture number 8, let's look at what we did in our previous lecture number 7. In the previous lecture number 7, we talked about various institutions, financial institutions globally available for supporting the, uh, the supporting the downtrodden class of the society or particularly the underdeveloped and developing nations. Their perspective not only to support the developing and underdeveloped nation, their perspective of formation was also to take care of our countries who have been badly affected by the different two world wars. Under that chapter, we talked about WTO, we talked about IMF, we talked about World Bank, we even talked about United Nations Con Conference of Trade and Development, we discussed International Commodity Agreement, we also talked about Generalized System of Preference and GSDP. Now let's begin with the lecture number 8 and let's see what are the things we will be covering in lecture number 8. This lecture number 8 is going to revolve around why there is a need of integration, why trade blocks are formed, who is going to get benefited for the formation after the formation of the trade block. Second, we will also try to figure out the what are the perspectives or the reasons for the growth of the trading block and how it is being facilitated. Third, we will talk about the impact of such integration world economy. We will also focus on major regional trading blocks or the groups formed and how it is helping and supporting the different community or the countries in the world as a whole. Now let's look at the levels of the integration. When it comes to the level of integration, they are forming different different community, they are forming in certain groups and let's see on what basis such groups are going to be formed. First idea comes in the mind that is of preferential trading agreement. You start thinking of forming an agreement between the nation which is going to be mostly preferred by both of us. It can be a bilateral agreement like US and Canada had. It can be a multilateral agreement like US, Canada and Mexico had. So it depends upon your preference or your relation with a particular country and your requirement of certain material from that country is going to be the sole reason why you will be forming a block or why you will be forming a preferential trade block with that different foreign countries. So the first idea has to come that is preferential trading agreement has to be formed between the nations which is going to be the facilitating point of agreement to do trading with each other with minimum cost involved into it. In the same line of direction when we move ahead when we are as we started thinking of preferential trading agreement and losing economic integration then we are going to move towards the free trade areas. Free trade area are basically where what you are doing you are removing the barriers. What you are doing you are removing the there are no barriers. Barriers in terms of tariffs and non-tariff. Tariff is, tariff is going to impose on price wherein non-tariff is going to be imposed on quantity. So they are going to reduce the barriers, but for whom? For the member countries. For whom they are going to remove these barriers? Only for the member country. And for the rest of the countries, there is going to be uh, some code of conduct, there is going to be certain duties which they have to bear, but free trade area is not deciding it. It's individually a different countries are going to decide for the third party. 
So, in short what we can say that free trade area is going to be formulated on the premise of first you have to remove the tariffs and non-tariff for the member countries. Example could be NAFTA that we will talk in little more detail in the upcoming slide. Next level of free trade area is your custom union. Here you are removing the barriers for sure. Here you are also removing the barriers like your tariffs, you are removing the tariffs, you are removing the non-tariffs also. But here you are also creating a charge for the third party. Here you are setting some custom union, custom duties for whom? For the third party that is third country. Third country means who are not your member country. So, you are setting some amount of money to be charged if you are having some transaction or sharing of goods and services with the country who are not the member of your or community then you are going to charge certain things from them. This is what the custom union. You progress further earlier a European Union used to initially when European Union was formed initially they were having this custom union system. They used to have free trading among all the member country and if they are having trading from outside that means from any other third country they are having the specified charges for that. Later European Union become as a common market despite of sharing of goods and services they even started sharing what factors of production. Factors of production also started sharing among all the member countries, no other person. That means you can share your uh, manpower if any, any if, if any worker is finding that he is going to get a good job in other country and then the particular country to which he belongs then he can easily move from the home country to the host country but the host country has to be the member of the European Union. Next is the formation of the economic union. Here you are having all the things like in the case of custom uh, common market they were having the traits of custom union they were having the traits of custom union plus they have this factors of production mobility free factors production mobility was there in the common market additionally there is going to be an economic union economic union is a kind of a system where what you will be doing you will be have you will focus on harmonizing the monetary system, monetary system, the fiscal system right and economic policies of whom only the member countries that is the economic union. That means here you are not only focusing on having a trade with each other, here you are not only focusing on sharing the factors of production with each other. You are additionally doing something for the member nation assisting them in their monetary policy, assisting them in their fiscal policy, assisting them in some more policy like bringing the harmony. Yeah, you try to bring harmony in the economy of your member nations that is the economic union. Further moving ahead this is your political union. Political union is a kind of the membership where the countries are going to lose their identity. They are going to lose their identity and become a politically sovereign. They become what? They become politically sovereign. That means they have they they find they find that let's come together and let's work together. The different government merge together and they form a big huge horizon for doing the business together. That is the political sovereignty is is there that they lost their individual identity and then they form the political union that that's the highest form of a preferential trade system could ever see. So I hope you have understood the different levels of integration starting from the preferential trading agreement why actually there was a need of any such sort of the preferential trading agreement 
any uh, the, this kind of the question might be arising in your mind. So, the answer for this is because uh, the country uh, different countries across the globe has been badly affected after 1994 that is that is after the second world war right initially there was a devastation and uh, the first world war ended up in the year 1919 and then the second world war ended up in the year 1944. So, people were struggling very badly and they were finding that how to regain the lost economy what different and the, all the sources of earning the business or doing the business have almost be have almost gone down and opportunities become uh, very limited. So, how to provide the various opportunity and how to facilitate the small little countries to grow and flourish. So, that was the only perspective of coming up with this kind of the integration among the nearby nation. So, that you can find that ok fine I am good in certain raw material, I am having certain resources, you are good in technology. So, let us share the things together and let us improve the economy of both the nation. You might not be having natural resources with you, but I as a country having lot of natural resources with me and you are good in technology. So, let us share and let us do the business together. Otherwise what will happen? You are rich in technology, but you do not have the natural resources which you require and I am good in natural resources, I do not have technology, so I will how I will be processing it. So, both the countries will not be able to get the business and they would not be able to grow and flourish. So, with these kind of the integration, what is becoming possible that you are interchanging your resources with each other, you are trying to find out the best market where you can find the best uh, the raw material for your business, how you can get the best factors of production for your business, how you can and you uh, you can equally find the best market to export your product or to sell your product. This what is possible because of such kind of the integration. Now, let us look at what is actually facilitating the growth of trading block. So, the answer is globalization only answer is globalization without globalization growth of such trading block would not be possible. So, let us look into it this paragraph trade block has aided the process of globalization which is the growing interdependence between the world as a result increased trade with factors such as economic, social, political, cultural factors that we have already discussed in the previous lecture when we were talking about the international business environment and we have seen that these different economic and uh, these different environmental factors have a significant impact on business international business trade right. So, you need to be cautious enough while taking a call which particular country to integrate with which particular country to have a trading block with and for this you need to have a way fair understanding of these different factors of environment. As they have helped country remove the economic barriers which have enabled more trade and free movement right. So, with the advent of globalization what happened it become quite easier people to have remove uh, it become easier for and it become must for the people to remove all sort of the economic barrier and the free movement of the goods and services and the factors of production start taking place. People start uh, uh, relating with each other because now the different nations have removed the strict po uh, policies and the tariff barriers they already have removed it. So, now it become easier for different countries to get into the host country. Lot of MNC start coming to India after 1991 the movement Indian company Indian government has adopted liberalization, privatization, globalization under the prime ministership of P. V. Narasimha Rao and finance ministry of Dr. Manmohan Singh, Manmohan Singh right. So, we uh, are lot of companies start moving to us the answer is why because of liberalization, privatization, globalization reform which took place in India in the year 1991 right because of this reform only MNC start coming up why what is what was there in this reform that is liberalizing the pro uh, liberalizing the various foreign investment policies, they come up with better FDI options, they come up with certain special economic zone area, export processing zone area, free trade zone areas which actually give uh, the lucrative offers to the foreign investors to invest in the countryside of a country and take the rebate from the government. It become a win-win situation for both the parties. It is a win-win situation for the government as well as it is a win-win situation for the foreign investor to invest in India. Why? Because they will be getting rebate and how it is a win-win situation for the Indian government because they will be 
there will be an improvement in the infrastructure if these foreign investor would be investing in special economic zone area special economic zone areas are those area which are less developed right and uh, by giving rebate government try to attract the foreign investor towards such area so uh, if uh, a foreign investor get agreed and they invest in the countryside or the rural area of a country which is less developed what is going to happen they are going there will be a improvement in infrastructure infrastructure in terms of improvement in the roads in improvement in the transportation system of all the ways maybe the roadway transportation if it is near by the coastal areas at the seaway transportation is going to get improved if possible the airways transport uh, transportation tracks transportation is going to improve electricity is going to improve education system is going to get improved hospital medical services are going to get improved data network service availability is also going to get improved eventually not over the night for sure it is not going to happen over the night but eventually there is going to be a trend right so the so a good example of a special economic zone area we can see in a country like gurugram noida these cities of a country uh, are coming under the special economic zone area and uh, uh, helped the government to attract the foreign investors industrialists in these area eventually this become a good bosh area and a city of full develop fully developed infrastructure now let's talk about the impact of uh, the integration how this integration is impacting different different area so let's look at the trade creation and diversion what is this trade creation trade creation is that finding different country who can do production on my behalf because i am not having sufficient resources with me so what i as a company would be doing i will be looking for different country who are rich in different resources and i will give them a contract to get the work done that is what known as that's a subcontracting or contract manufacturing right they will be uh, they will be asked to do the production they will they will be provided with certain raw material they will be provided with certain design but they don't have any right over the raw material which has been provided to them they just have a right of processing it and charge the processing fees from the company and then the company is going to take the entire product and it's up to the company how they are going to supply to various different parts of the world so like for example apple is doing this like uh, the nike company is doing this they are opening the like for in case of the nike company they opened the plant in vietnam china why they opened the plant because they find they could get their work done more cheaply in these area the processing system is quite cheap the cost of production is quite cheap which is going to ultimately help me to gain the competitive advantage in the market so this is what the trade creation is where you are trying to find the low cost uh, low cost of production right we are, we are trying to find the emerging economy so that you can get the low cost locational advantage next is the trade diversion here what is happening you are diverting from what here you are having a diversion your trade is shifting your trade is shifting from where from your trade is shifting from low cost production low cost production your maybe within the that is your uh, uh, which is your outside the union right you 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 might be the part of certain uh, trade block you might be the part of certain union and the outside your union you are getting some low cost production of facilities but the trade is shifting from low cost production union which is outside your union to where to a high cost production to a high cost production which is inside your union so this is the diversion however in case of this trade creation consumption your consumption is what is happening to your consumption consumption is shifting from high cost high cost of production to low cost of production let me explain you this uh, in case of trade diversion what is observed there is a trade shift from low cost production that means the you might be getting some trade benefits right you are an american company 
right and you are getting certain trade benefit maybe from china and that is beyond that that particular country is out of the circle of your regional trade block then what you will what you have to do you have to get into trade diversion you have to stop that work which you are pursuing there in the china and move your entire production to the regional trade block of american country you might be from usa and you now you have to move your business from china to maybe mexico or to canada because you are having a you are a active member of nafta so you have to move your business from these places to this that is what the diversion that you may be getting low production cost but you have to move to the high production cost because Uh, this is coming under the integration you won't be allowed to do certain business and the trade creation that you you are the member and you start looking for among the member countries among the various member countries of the trade block you start looking where i can get the low production cost so that i can shift from high production cost you start looking for what you start looking for low cost production places so that you can shift your product from high cost production right price and competition is another very important aspect which is going to get affected highly because of uh, this integration and who is going to get the benefit of this only consumer who is going to get the benefit the consumer because competition for sure is going to get increase competition is going to get increase because there is integration so lot many come the integration because of integration your company start growing flourishing you start finding the cost advantage you start finding cost effective product so competition is going to increase and as competition is going to increase that means the price has to go down and when price is going down who is going to get benefit customer is going to get benefit so with the advent of integration formation of the trade block companies start finding the places where they can do production at a lower cost and as they could do the production at a lower cost what they will be doing they will be offering the product at a lower cost to their customer this is going to be the benefit for the customer now think from the perspective of the company this is going to be a tough competitive situation for a company because now your rival company your competitor could offer the pr- same product which you are offering at x price and you could only offer at x plus price because you are not having that cost advantage which your competitor is having so ultimately consumer are getting benefit because of this integration it's uh, consumer are also getting benefit it's not ultimately the next is that dynamic effect integration is having a dynamic effect dynamic means it is Uh, the country who used to be considered absolutely gone a country very close to bankruptcy country like mexico who declared once in the year 1990 1980s right 1980s mexico declared that they won't be able to pay the debts they dishonor the financial contract who dishonored the financial contract M- mexico Mexico dishonored the financial contract they stated that we won't be able to pay off because our losses are we have suffering from negative balance of payment so we won't be able to pay it off this was a situation with Mexico the moment there was an integration of Mexico Mexico with Canada Mexico become a member of NAFTA where Canada is a member and america is a member united states is a member so the moment they become a member of this trade block the economy of mexico start rising because they start getting job opportunities they start getting businesses and they start doing business with united states of america and eventually the situation start improving of mexico economy of a scale that that's every country look for and similarly every company in a country is looking for economy of scale that is a break even point everyone strive for everyone wait for everyone calculate the payback period right they always calculate time value of money whatever the money they are investing they want to return on every investment right so economy of a scale start reaching where people start reaching to the economy of scale or the break even point quite early because now they are not working alone they are not working in isolation rather they are working in collaboration they are working in good good group or collectively they are performing the work so which all togetherly impacting the idea of integration
Now let us look at the various regional economic integrations. Regional economic integration is taking place in Europe, it is taking place in America, taking place in Asia and Pacific region, Africa and in the Middle East, right? Some different economic integrations were going on and people were forming different trade blocks within their own territory. Right, so Europe formed European Union, European Central Bank, European Economy, Monetary Union, European Free Trade Association, which is what in short form we can say EFTA. European Union member, one of the member of the European country of the entire continent, Norway. Norway stated that I do not want to be the member of European Union. I do not want to be the member of European Union. Why? Because Norway if GDP was so high because of which they have to pay more subscription amount being a part of European Union. So, they stated that it is going to drain my entire economy and uh, for uh, supporting the other European Union system, I do not want to be the member of it. After seeing the success of European Union, Norway and other country formed their own association which is known as European Free Trade Association, right. So let us look into it in with little more detail and even European Union plus if you are going to add the two European Union and European Free Trade Association, it is what known as European Economic Area, it is known as European Economic Area. Let us see the regional economic integration which took place in the Europe and how European Union was formed. Let us get into a little more detail. The first step toward economic integration was made in the year 1948 when the organization of European Economic Cooperation was established for the reconstruction of Europe after the two Second World War particularly from for the economic benefits. So they started thinking that what different things we can do in order to facilitate the smooth and the free flow economic growth in a country. In 1952, European Coal and Steel Community was formed by the six European countries were there who formed like the six, uh, six different countries were among them as the Germany was there that is particularly the Western Germany was there uh, and the example this is the Western country, Western Germany and Eastern Germany are the two example of political union. They, this is the example of political union and uh, they have lost their individual identity and they become like a West Germany and the East Germany, right. So West Germany become a, a member country and the country who, uh, who actually initiated European coal and steel community formation, France was another country, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg. These were the six different countries right, who formed European Union and Steel Community in the year 1952 and the perspective is to provide the quality steel across the globe and that become one of the essential thing to reconstruct the industry. So steel and coal are so essential, they are the basic raw material for starting any industry and doing any business. So they started working on improvising these raw material for supplying to the various member countries. Under the Treaty of Rome in 1957, the European Community was established and this European Community was later known as European Union. Now it provided for the creation of common market with the objective of elimination of the internal trade, abolition of abstract uh, obstacles, free trade movement that is a free movement of factors of production and harmonization of the member state law. These were the essential three basic objectives before the formation of European Union or a European community and, and, uh, and this is coming under the common markets lab. These are the different member country in the navy blue color who are the part of the European Union and others are in the observer state. Four institution structure of European Union is one is the European Commission. European Commission is going to set the legislation or the law, right? They are going to set the legislation or the law for the entire European Union to function and grow and flourish. And the Council of European Union are, are the group of the authorities 
they are the group of the authorities they ensure the smooth execution of the law set by the european commission and european parliament also it's a right now having a member of 732 members are there in the european parliament they also ensure that the proper execution of the law system is taking place or not and the court of justice if there is any clash if people are not adhering to the law of the european commission if there are certain clashes among the member country anybody want to exit out from the union then they are going to put forward their plea in the court of justice this is what happened in case of the Brexit. great britain want to exit out from the european union and they put forward their plea in the year 2016. let's look at the objectives of the european union the promotion of peace and well-being of the union citizens right because of the economic crisis and the tough time the people have undergone because every next person was facing that tough time because of the war first world war and just immediately after the first world war after few years the second world war was initiated so people were so badly hurt by those two world war and they want some peace they want some relaxation they really want to be quiet and and start thinking the new rejuvenation of the nation as a whole so they the perspective of the european union is to promote the peace and well-being of the union citizen area of freedom security and justice without internal frontiers right this is what the people were emphasizing more on that everyone should be given a certain space certain autonomy to think analyze and come up with some better practices for the development of the economy sustainable development on based on the economic growth and the social justice that was another perspective taken into care that growth should be sustainable it should not be for some time it is going to be for for a longer span for sustainable growth we want we are not looking for a growth uh, for a short span of the time or the short run at the cost of environment or at the cost of human health or at the cost of human psychology we are not looking for such kind of the short growth short term growth we are looking for longer span long horizon growth and for that we have to give respect to the environment and human psychology and if human and we even have to take care of the animals and the plants around us if we want a sustainable growth social market economy was another perspective highly competitive and aiming at full employment and social progress that was the the key point taken into consideration that we will be generating massive number of jobs for our youth so that they feel ill motivated and they feel that there is a scope and there will be no disheartment or discouragement among the youth or the people of the cities and and they will be focusing on creating a huge single market where the people can easily move and even can look for the jobs in different different countries across the european union member countries now uh, before uh, these were the different objectives of the european union and the uh, let me just quickly go back to the previous slide and update you with like this is uh, the european union and european free trade right so european union i hope you people have understood the uh, from the perspective of objectives and even i just told you that european free trade association is formed uh, by uh, the norway even the lentistan was the member of it switzerland was the member of it ireland was the member of it and they formed their own after seeing the success and progress of european union they formed their own and this all together is known as european economic area European Central Bank was formed and the purpose of formation of the European Central Bank is like a central bank for the all the member nations right and the perspective is to regulate the flow of currency across uh, the uh, across the different uh, member countries the perspective of this is that and uh, they try to bring the price stability and even try to lower down the inflation so perspective of formation of uh, European Central Bank is to bring the price stability yes is to bring the price stability and the second thing they will be focusing on is to lower the inflation so if uh, they could do it they are trying to bring the price stability and lowering down the inflation and it, be, it is acting like a central bank for all the member nations european economic and monetary unions their perspective is actually to con uh, ensure the proper and smooth execution of the monetary policy formed by european central bank now let's move towards the regional economic integration of america right 
So, uh, these are the different economic integration in case of America where we could see initially there was a collaboration between US and Canada and there were certain clashes from the Canada side and they put forward in the dispute settlement mechan mechanism of the WTO in order to get over from those clashes. Later, another uh, the trade bloc among the various AMBA countries, particularly this NAFTA is formed, this is abbreviated as NAFTA and it is an association between three countries, one is the Canada and your Mexico and USA. Right, so this is an association between three member countries, one is your Canada, Mexico and your USA. And I just told you in the pre uh, previous slide when we were talking about the support or the impact of uh, the integration upon the economy of particular nation or the country. So, I give the example of Mexico that it was a very tough time for the Mexico during these years and they even dishonored the financial contract. And after the becoming a member of NAFTA, economic situation of Ma Mexico start flourishing and growing very well. Right, next is the ADN community. Actually, initially there was an ADN pact. There was an ADN pact which was signed in 1969 and the member countries who signed it uh, actually the Colombia was there, Peru was there, Chile was there, Ecuador was there and Bolivia. These countries were the member of Indian pact and they signed it and the perspective of them is very socialistic. They were very socialistic in their approach and they do not uh, want any sort of, they were actually against free trade. They were against this ideology and they were focusing on socialistic approach of doing the business because of which what happened, they could not able to sustain and there was a collapse. It was totally get collapsed in the year 1980, there was a collapse. This entire system got collapsed because they were having different approach. They were having an approach of being socialistic rather than being free trade and rest of the countries in the world are favoring the free trade. So, you become an odd person and because you become an odd person, you do not get any other country to support your ideology. So, the entire system of the Indian pact was get dissolved and it get collapsed. Right, so then again they try to revive in the year 90, they try to revive again, they try to create the system and uh, uh, they start looking for certain free trade zone. In the 1992, they created their free trade zone, they created their custom union in 1994 and they created their common market finally in 1995 and uh, from Indian pact to they become a Indian community. From Indian pact, they become a Indian community in 1997 and Venezuela also become a member of it of uh, this particular community, right. And in 2003, what happened? In 2003, this, uh, this particular community even signed the agreement, signed the agreement with Mercosur, right. This is Mercosur is actually a Southern American common market, right. And it was uh, formed with two members initially, there were only two member country, one is your Argentina and another one was the Brazil. With these two country, member countries, Mercosur was formed, an agreement was signed between Indian community and Mercosur. Later, Paraguay also joined this and even Uruguay also joined this and Bolivia, Chile are, are the associated member of Mercosur. So, the idea and the perspective of different countries getting united, coming together to do trading because alone they are finding they are not sufficient enough to take care or nurture the economy and do justice to the citizens of the nation. So, they started finding better permutation combination across the different countries of the continent who can be my savior, who can help me, whom I can help other, who, how I can get the help of other. That was the only perspective why these different integrations were taking place, right. Central America common market was also created, Caribbean community and common market was created, free trade area of uh, America was created and 
every next activity is happening only with one perspective in mind is to facilitate the economy of all the member nation make the things easier for the member nation to do the business it's not just about removing the barriers like uh, through tariffs and non tariff barrier but they also started focusing on making factors of production to be freely moving from one nation to another member nations next look at the economic integration of asia and the pacific region like uh, the association of southeast asia nation asean is there asia pacific economic cooperation apac is there south asia association of regional cooperation sarc is there right uh, so formation of these uh, regional trade blocks among the asian region because people start observing that as other could do so well after formation of the regional trade block and we being asian suffering very badly with the economic devastation or economic crisis let us also form our own community so that there will be a support system and so that we can also facilitate the trade so that we can also have economic Uh, opportunities like generating the job like uh, sharing the goods and resources with each other like sharing the factors of production with each other so uh, and eventually after formation of such kind of the integration or the trade block what is going to happen your economy is going to get strengthened and once your economy becomes strengthened foreign investors will also start coming to your country so the formation of integration of economy is not only going to help you from the perspective of surviving among all the member nation it's also going to make you attractive for the foreign investors because foreign investor will also not invest in a country like greece venezuela who are suffering badly from uh, the economic crisis they don't want to invest there they would like to invest in a country like india because it is progressing it is growing it's growing so such kind of integrations are going to give you certain opportunities and these opportunities are going to flourish your economy and your economy will start flourishing foreign investors will start finding your country as lucrative and will also start finding your country as a potential country to invest in similarly the regional economic integration in africa were there and the different economic community and the west uh, west african states come together and the perspective of them it's not just the uh, sharing of the you know, goods and services they predominantly specify the improvement in the area of construction because what they were observing uh, we couldn't do work we couldn't do uh, much of the good work because our infrastructure is quite poor right as our infrastructure is quite poor can there is no proper construction so we are going to form a community of the west african states so that we can improve upon our infrastructure by improving the construction of the buildings we by improving the construction of the roads right improving the power supply and other uh, system which is going to ultimately generate the job opportunities because there are already a lot of poverty in these area they were suffering very badly the people not even have sufficient uh, uh, sufficient and food to eat right so in order to generate the basics for the people or the resident of these areas of the western africa state the people come up with this kind of the integration so that let's start working on improving the infrastructure let's generate certain jobs so that people at least have certain basic amenities to survive and sustain there were six regional groups of uh, uh, of uh, such economic on, uh, integration in africa like afro Malagasy Economic Union is there East Africa Customs Union is there West Africa Economic Community Maghreb uh, Economic Community Organization of African Unit Southern Africa Development Community and the perspective of these community is to work work for removing poverty through generation of what job opportunities and that could only be done by improving the infrastructure of the place and basically the infrastructure goes in few lines like you if you are improving the transportation you are improving the electricity supply you are improving the education you are improving the health sciences medical sciences you are improving the data and network services in your country right so these are the broad areas on the basis of which you can improve the infrastructure level of an entire country so they start focusing on improving the infrastructure and firstly they focus on construction of the roads and the buildings so that business can be done easily without proper supply chain how you will be able to supply your goods 
from your manufacturing unit to the ultimate customer. So you need to have a proper construction of the road, you need a proper place where the things are connected, you can supply your product. So they started with a very basic thing that infrastructure development and uh, with such infrastructure development jobs opportunities start coming up which start helping the citizens to at least get the basic, basic things to meet out the livelihood. Now let's look at the integration in the Middle East. Middle East is a Gulf area, right? So there is a Gulf Cooperation Council, and it's a uh, it's a only trade bloc formed in 1980 with the member countries, namely like Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arab, United Arab Emirates, and it permit free movement of citizen without visa and ownership of power, uh, property within the region without the need of local partner as well. So there, uh, the person can easily move in these different countries of Middle East area without even having a visa. You don't even have to own the property there, right? You don't even have to own the property in these places, right? Uh, that they, there is no such documentation required. You can easily move and this what means sh moving factors of production. Why anybody will move from your country free factors of free movement of factors of production this is the this is what this is facilitating free movement of factors of production why anybody would be moving from if i am having a home in saudi arabia why i would be moving to kuwait because i am looking for a job and why i would be looking for a job because i might not be getting sufficient job here or i want to expand my business or i want to do something more in uh, in the field of oil maybe right so i need to move from saudi arabia to the kuwait side so these kind of the factors of production, labor is one of the factor of production. So labor is moving from Saudi Arabia to Kuwait and this is what is being facilitated by the uh, this formation of the group that is Gulf Cooperation of Council. However, it become more political entity than the economic bloc later on. Now let us quickly look at what different topics we had discussed today. Today we talked about the levels of integration and under the levels of integration what we have seen, we have seen that there are there are different levels on the basis of which you can remove the barriers. Like in the under the levels of integration we have seen there is a preferential trading system and for the preferential trading system there are certain things which you would be doing like there will be a free trade area and above the free trade area there is going to be the custom union, right? There is going to be the custom union above the custom union that means another this is the this is a level first level is a free trade area where you are removing only the uh, uh, tariff barriers and non tariff barriers right here you are making uh, making a policy for the third party right you are charging some amount for the third party you are not you are specifying that what is going to be the amount to be paid by the third party but here in this free trade area there is no such specification then from custom union you move to the to the market of common market right and from common market you move to which particular market economic union and from economic union you move to political union I just give an example of political union also in the previous slide that is Eastern Germany, Western Germany are the example of political union. So these are the different integration, these are the different levels of the integration starting from free trade area which we could see the best example is a NAFTA of this, then there is a custom union initially European Union behaving like a custom union, then it, there was an improvement in the system, their legislation and everything, they become a common market where uh, they, uh, when they become a common market, what they started doing? They started having a free flow of factors of production and in the economic union, what was happening? They started forming some economic policies, they started taking care of the monetary policy and the fiscal policy of the various member country, how, sh how a particular country should regulate the flow of uh, money in the market which is going to help the country to maintain the correct inflation uh, rate, right. And uh, the political union where you s lose your identity, you, you become a politically sovereign like Eastern Germany and the Western Germany. Next in this lecture, we talked about the impact of integration, how it actually has impacted the different world economy. So we could real, really see that 
integration help in the trade creation, right? We started finding various possibility across the globe, right? You just because of this trade creation, you get to know that you might you are good in certain agriculture commodities and I am good in processing. So, let me take the agriculture stuffs from you and process it and produce to the next market. And that means in the trade creation, what we observe, there is a consumption shift. What we observed in the trade creation, there is a consumption shift from high cost production to low cost production that was a consumption shift. And second impact of the integration what we observed is the trade diversion. Here what we observe that trade shift is taking place from low cost production area to where it is moving to high cost production. And this is within your union, your membership and this is outside your union that's why the shift is taking place because now you form the you form the integration you form the block now if you were out you were dealing with some other country and no matter it was a low cost production now you have to move to the high cost production area no, because maybe high cost production area that is one of the example or just one of the situation analysis right uh, the, despite of low cost of production you have to move from that place to the high cost production area because now you are member of some other regional trade block right apart from this there were other uh, impacts also like the impact on your price and uh, competition right this was another impact of uh, the integration this was like a second impact price and competition because of uh, the trading such kind of the trade block what start happening the comp competition level start increasing competition level start increasing why because people could find the low cost production people could find the low cost production as they could find low cost production the price of commodity start going down as price of commodity is going down customer is going to be very satisfied customer is going to be satisfied and as customer is satisfied what means what does it mean that it means that such integrations are supporting the general community as well giving lot of options not only to the businessmen to grow and flourish but also the general citizen the buyers the users of the country are also getting benefit of such kind of the integration so it is not lopsided development it is like a full fledged balanced growth of a country start taking place because of the formation of such kind of integration right and uh, apart from this impact of integration on the price and the com competition there was uh, the improvement in the overall economic of a scale of the business right there was a dynamics dynamical change start taking place in the growth of a different countries who were not doing well earlier started doing well after becoming a member of the trade block economy of scale start uh, the companies start achieving economy of scale comparatively at a lower payback period or the less payback period or the time value of the money people start attaining at a quite earlier stage next in this lecture we had discussed about the economic regional economic integration from america to the asia right american regional integrations were discussed there were the european integrations were discussed african integrations were discussed asian discussed and even the middle east middle east in different regional integrations were discussed the perspective of formation of regional blocks and such integration by and large is to allow free trade among member nation and if you are not the member nation then you have to bear certain costs, you have to bear certain charges that comes under the custom duty, which every next country is going to set for them for the third country. That is what happened in the free trade area. But if you are um, uh, if you are having a trade which is coming under the custom union, then the custom union is going to fix the charge for the third country. Apart from this, such kind of the economic integration is helping the human mankind to get the jobs and as we could see in case of Africa, Africa formed 
the various regional trade bloc. It is not just uh, to flourish the business, it is also to help the citizens of the country to fight against the poverty. So, dear learners, I hope you have understood today's lecture. These are the different books that I have referred in today's lecture. Thank you so much. I really hope you have understood all the best. Thank you. My name is Jilat Sam and I teach sociology at IIT Kanpur. Uh, I am here to tell you a little bit about how we can think about globalization in a sociological manner. Now uh, one of the important concepts in the field of globalization uh, and particularly global studies is that of global flows. It is a term that was developed by uh, the, soci uh, the sociologist and anthropologist uh, Arjun Apadurai. He said that as the world is becoming a more and more global place, you increasingly see the movement of different types of things, uh, both tangible and non-tangible across multiple national borders. Um, to begin with, uh, you can look at how your day proceeds. I often need a cup of tea to actually start my day. Now if you think about it. Uh, tea that we dr drink is not something that is uh, uh, that originated in India. It is actually a drink that comes to us from uh, quite far away in China. Uh, so, and this is something that has happened uh, not immediately, but it has happened uh, 400 or 500 years ago. Um, so, this kind of movement actually happened uh, with the movement of people. Now uh, this kind of movement of people and goods is one category of flows that Apadurai talks about. A second category of flows could be financial flows uh, and a good uh, way to think about this is the kind of volatility that you can see in economic markets today. Uh, for instance, in 2008, uh, uh, the whole world experienced a, pr a very serious economic jolt. Um, developments in the country of Iceland had uh, a huge repercussion across many, many countries in the world. Now that gives you an indication of the kind of financial flows uh, that are a part of globalization. So we are not only talking about money flowing from place to place, but also financial decisions uh, made in one place having an impact on other parts of the world. Apadurai also argues that there is a third category of flows which he refers to as the flow of images or media. Now this is something that uh, I am sure you are quite used to. Uh, much of the programming that you watch on television today, for instance, uh, you may actually be watching uh, channels that uh, you know are, have originated uh, or programming that's originated elsewhere. Uh, more than that, it could also be that the programming that you see today uh, is influenced by shows that have originated abroad. Similarly, you can have content that was made in India. Uh, which makes its way to uh, other places in the world. Uh, for instance, we know that Bollywood films are extremely popular uh, in many countries across Africa. Uh, so this kind of movement of media is, uh, you know, Apadurai considers it to be an important part of globalization. He t the fourth category that he talks about uh, is the movement of ideas. So. Uh, this means that um, ideas that are popular in one part of the world uh, are not restricted to that part alone, 
but they actually travel across borders. Uh, so, for instance, um, something that uh, you may read about in the papers uh, uh, would be, say, events such as uh, gray, uh, gay pride events. Now, uh, gay pride events uh, have their origin uh, in places like New York, uh, but the idea that there should be equality uh, uh, between people irrespective of what their sexual preference is, that is an idea that uh, has now become um, popular across the world. Uh, and so that's, that's the fourth category of flows that he referred to. Um, the fifth category of flows that uh, Apadurai talks about is that of technology. Um, an easy way to think about this is, uh, let's say you, tomorrow there is news announced that, uh, you know, Apple is going to release, app, you know, iPhone 7. Uh, as you can anticipate, there is going to be a lot of excitement in many parts of the world and people are going to start queuing up, waiting for those products to actually come to their country. So, uh, you know, technology is something that is quite exciting and uh, really moves across uh, various national borders. 